Good morning to all our attendees and welcome to this morning session. Um, we're going to have a talk about some of the components regarding the geyser, but first of all, let's start off with uh, the important part regarding the COVID-19 procedures. Please always wear a mask when you're out in public. Wash your hands with soap or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid, uh, sorry, avoid close contact with people who are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with a flexed elbow or tissue, and then throw the tissue in the bin. Clean and disinfect frequently used services and objects. And although we are on level now, one now, please uh, observe these uh, protocols and keep yourself safe. So without further ado, let, let's move on to our actual presentation and what this is all about. So we're going to talk about the PRV um, and the vacuum breakers today. And the reason for this is that we've realized that there are a number of people that do not always know what the functions of these components are, how do they work, and what uh, does the regulation say regarding these. So there's just a couple of examples of a PRV um, that you must have seen, uh, just different manufacturers, uh, versions of this component. Um, so if we look at the PRV itself, um, two functions, and you might have realized, and, and most of you will know that the components around the geyser all have two functions. Now in this situation, again, the same thing, the PRV function, the actual pressure regulating valve function is to reduce, maintain, and regulate the incoming supplied water pressure for a system at the preset limit of the specific valve. Now, we all know these are color coded and uh, the color codes that we use mostly when it comes to a PRV is the red one, which is 400 kPa or the green one, which is 600 kPa. So that is regarding the PRV itself. And then on top of this, uh, of this one, we have uh, the expansion um, relief valve, which is incorporated. And that function or function of that valve is uh, it discharges natural expansion of the heated water on every heating cycle. For example, a 400 kPa expansion relief valve discharges at plus minus 391 kPa to protect the cylinder or the tank from premature deterioration. So if we just look back at last week's session with uh, Richard Bailey, we will understand that the TP valve, a 400 kPa TP valve, will discharge for um, pressure at 1.5 times the rating, which is 600 kPa. So this is where this component plays a major role in protecting the cylinder. So as you realize, or as you see, at 391 uh, kPa, this expansion relief valve will discharge, uh, once again, as to protect the geyser cylinder. How does it work? So our cold water supply, if we look at the PRV itself, this is a, just a cut through version. Cold water supply comes in, it goes through the filter and through the diaphragm, and then it feeds to the geyser the reduced pressure. Let's say 400, it will be 400 kPa, at more or less 60 liters per minute. So that's the PRV function to reduce whatever the income pressure is to the pressure rating of the valve. Then if we look at the expansion um, part of this, you will see that we have a relief spring, which is calibrated at the top to more or less 390 kPa. So at 391, it will start discharging expansion coming back, in other words, pushing back from the geyser through the cold supply line. So if we look at expansion, 150 liters of water increases in volume up to about two liters when it's heated on every heating cycle. So that extra volume due to the fact that water cannot be compressed needs to be released or else it will cause the geyser to be damaged. And so you often most probably get the question from the client, why is there water dripping out of that little pipe there. And this is the way to explain it, is that 
on your heating cycle with water expanding. It needs to discharge to protect the geyser and it can discharge between two to four liters on a daily basis. So let's uh, look at what the SANS regulation says regarding this. SANS 10254, 5.6 regarding main shutoff. So at 5.6.1, it says for the ease of maintenance, the inlet pipe to a pressure control valve and to a float, float valve shall be furnished with an isolating valve. Now, guys, if we look at the example here, this is what we know as a multi-valve, which incorporates an isolating valve there. But over and above for that, even if that is part of the valve, we still need to have an isolating valve um, installed before this valve so that we can service it. So if we cannot isolate the water, um, or even if we use this isolating valve on the PRV, we won't be able to remove this component for service. So just remember, you need to have an isolating valve in any case before any PRV. Then in uh, 5.6.3, it says an isolating valve shall not be provided between any pressure reducing valve and a water heater if such a pressure reducing valve incorporates an expansion relief device or a vacuum relief device intended to protect. So in this instance, once again, your expansion relief is incorporated into the PRV. So the actual uh, rule of thumb is wherever you've got an expansion relief valve, you cannot have any flow control device between that expansion relief and the geyser. And that's why this regulation says uh, this is what we need to do. On 5.9.2, it says the position of the pressure control valve shall be downstream of all high draw off points, which is basically your garden taps or in uh, flats and, and these type of units, you might get a main fed toilet flush valve. So garden taps needs to be drawn off between the water meter and the PRV and not after the PRV. Then we're talking about the expansion control valve, and that will just reiterate what I just said now. 5.8 says the expansion control valve on cold water supply. When an expansion control valve is installed on the cold water side of the water heater, it shall be installed downstream of any isolating valve, gate valve, non-return valve, or any flow control device. So. Guys, this is, uh, as I say, this, this supports what I just said earlier. So in this picture here, we cannot have an isolating valve or any of these flow control devices between the PRV where there's an expansion control valve present and the geyser. Right, so what is the... What is what is this about regarding discharges? So you will also note that in SANS 10254, 5.2, when it talks to this discharge pipes from valves, this incorporates the expansion valve. In other words, this expansion relief valve as well as the safety valve. And it says, this pipe shall be of a size not less than the size of the connection to which they are fitted. In other words, if that is a 15 mil connection it needs to be 15 mil or 22 for that matter if that is the size so we need to continue with that size from the start to the end it must have three or fewer bends and for each additional bend the maximum drain pipe length shall be reduced by 600 millimeters so just to come back to the tp valve we this is most um, applicable in the, uh, we all know that we have got four meters on the TP valve discharge before we need to increase the pipe diameter. Now, in the event of, uh, so let me go back, sorry. The, the regulation is clear that you need to only use three or fewer bends of a 45 degree radius. So if we look at, uh, a situation where you need to install a geyser and for some other reason it's placed in such a way that you need to now use four 45 degree bends. Then this is where the 600 millimeter comes to comes into play. So in that instance, for every additional elbow, that 
four meter length will be reduced with 600 millimeters. So in actual fact, if you have to use four and your pipe length is four meters to the external um, discharge point, then that length, that maximum length allowed is only 3.4 now due to this uh, stipulation in the regulation. So then it carries on and it says the discharge pipe from the extension, expansion control and safety of shall be so installed that they incline downwards continuously to the outlet. The drainage of both valve and piping is ensured. Blockage due to freezing of foreign objects is prevented. When flow occurs from them, the flow can be readily observed with the minimum risk of injury or damage due to steam or hot water. They are never joined together. Each is led to a discharge point which is visible outside the building and in a position where the discharge from the pipe will not cause a nuisance and cannot become blocked. Water traps which could prevent the free return or end to the system do not develop. So basically the same rule applies to the expansion valve that applies to the safety valve with, with the exclusion of one of two other one or two items. So this is the important part, and you will see that there's a number of uh, uh, points in this that tells us that the discharge must be readily, readily observed. In other words, it needs to be external, needs to be um, in a position where it can be seen and where it's visible and where it cannot cause damage or injury. So this is what we come across. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic PRV that's been installed. And obviously there was water dripping at some stage. You can see the marks there. And this person decided, no, we need to stop this. And they just blocked off the pipe. So you can imagine uh, what the end result is going to be here. Uh, and this is another typical example of a PRV nicely installed. However, the elbow is being used 90 degrees instead of 45, which according to the regulation is not correct. And you will note here, between our water meter and the PRV, the draw off for the garden tap. So that comes into play as well. So how do I determine what my PRV pressure must be? And that all relates back to the serial plate on the geyser. 400 kPa red serial plate. So it tells me that I need to use a 400 kPa PRV. And in this instance, everything is happy, working the way it should. In the instance of a 600 kPa, you can still use a 400 kPa, which is in other words, lower than the, rate, the pressure rating of the geyser. And that was is still okay. It's still acceptable. It will work. There's no risks involved yet. However, when we get to the next one, where we've got 400 kPa geyser rating and a 600 PRV, no go. This is not allowed because you are now the running the risk. Remember, this, this uh, PRV will discharge way over the 400 or 391 kPa that the 400 does. So you're now actually causing this geyser to deteriorate over time. So let's look at vacuum breakers. Once again, there's two functions here and there's uh, different uh, vacuum breakers that we find in the market, the Cobra ones, there's QuickCart, there's Apex, there's quite a number here. And they all basically do the same. It's to prevent backfire siphonage, which is reverse uh, flow of hot water through the cold water lines, potentially uh, scalding people to prevent back siphonage of water out of the geyser, leaving the element exposed and dry frying the element. And it also allows full drainage of the geyser to do repairs. So those are the functions of the PR Achla vacuum breaker. And if we go to the next slide, this is basically just an explanation as to how, do, how does it work. So our vacuum breaker is a one-way valve. So it will not allow water to discharge, but it will allow air to go into the system even when needed. So when we fill up our geyser, this standpipe will not fill to the top with water. 
there will be air there. In other words, this air gap here acts as a buffer or a, an absorber, if you want to put it that way. So if we have an air gap there, the tap is being opened and suddenly closed, that air gap, due to the fact that air can be compressed, will, you, it will act as a buffer or an absorber for that sudden stop of water flow so that it will push the air gap back and slowly eventually release it to absorb the shock of that um, water flow that's being stopped. And then obviously this is the main function is to allow, allow air into the system when we need to drain the system. So what does the SANS code says? SANS 10252, part one, when it comes to vacuum breakers, it says the vacuum rel uh, relief valve shall be installed on the inlet and outlet side in the following positions to prevent drainage of the water heater and the collapse of the heater. Number one, as close as practical, uh, practicable to the water heater that is to be protected and Number two, on upstands that are provided in both the cold water uh, feed to and the hot water feed pipe from the water heater and such upstands shall, be, shall extend at least 300 millimeters above the top of the water heater. <clears throat> so there is obviously, and I know the question is already in your mind, but uh, you know, there's a variation here. So in, this is saying 10252, and we'll get to what 10254 says just now. So that's that's the one thing to look at. In this uh, instance, it says the vacuum breaker needs to be 300 millimeter above the top of the water heater. So this is just a little sketch of a horizontal installation. And there, it's, there it is. 300 millimeters higher than the top of the geyser on both sides. And you will note here that the outlet is on the top of the geyser, not on the side. So in this instance, 300 millimeters higher than the top of this geyser. So whether it is horizontal or vertical, the same rule applies. Here's a vertical geyser. And again, you'll see 300 millimeters higher than the top of the geyser. So what does 10254 say about vacuum breakers? 10254 says, when installed at a horizontal distance of more than 700 millimeters from the outlet, in other words, the hot side, the vacuum control valve may be T directly into the hot water supply line unless the manufacturer's installation instruction or the local authority uh, bylaws require the vacuum breaker to be mounted on 300 millimeters range. So see the difference here. Yeah, it says it needs to be installed installed on risers. And that's due to the fact that some of our geysers that we find has got an outlet on the side. Let's say for instance, yeah, in instead of on the top like this one. So in that instance, you need to install the vacuum breaker on a 300 millimeter riser and it still complies. The manufacturer is happy. The, um, the warranties will be intact. So everything is hunky-dory. Now, coming back to the 700 millimeters. So in this instance, you can see the roof here is preventing this standpipe to be 300 millimeters. So in that instance, you can go 700 millimeter along the hot water, install a T and directly above the T, install your vacuum breaker. And that is still in line with the regulation. In this instance, they did install a standpipe, but that is not even necessary. If it is 700 millimeter or further, you can install your vacuum brick breaker right at the top of that T. So let's like look at the anti-siphon loop. Sans 10252, um, part one, 8.4.2 says backflow prevention devices. In other words, a vacuum breaker and any backflow prevention device shall be installed in such a position that in the case of a vacuum breaker, it is installed in an appropriate anti-siphon loop. So here's our vacuum breaker. And this is what we are talking about. This section here is the anti-siphon loop. And you will note that the horizontal leg of your anti-siphon loop needs to be higher 
than the water level or higher than the top of the geyser to make it effective. And that's what this is all about. So it's not only the vacuum breaker, but also the anti-siphon loop that will prevent or will assist to prevent this geyser from draining when water flow is, is being stopped. So what does it say? Strands 10 to 54, hot and cold water delivery pressure. Now we are talking about balanced pressure. The various components of the system shall be so installed that the hot and cold water delivery pressure to the water mixing components is balanced. The residual dynamic pressure at the fitting shall not vary by more than 20%. This requires that the layout of the and the pipe sizes shall be correctly calculated in terms of SANS 10252. So balance pressure, um, I think it's quite obvious, but as you can see, the pressure between hot and cold, and especially when it comes to mixers, mixing valves, uh, uh, zinc mixers, bath mixers, showers, this is important because if the pressure is too much, from the one or the other, you might find the situation that either the hot water totally disappears if the cold water pressure is too, too much, or the other way around where people might get scalded. So this is what it should look like. My incoming water supply, there's my isolating valve, PRV with the expansion, and there's my cold water, which is now a balanced supply because the same pressure going to the geyser and um, coming out of the geyser will then be similar to the water pressure of the cold water supply. Thank you guys from my side. Thank you for attending. Thank, thank you for bearing with us. Um, hopefully we didn't bore you too much. However, we do um, understand that these things need to be put out there and business owners, owners of plumbing companies, please inform your installers about this information and keep them up to date. From my side, that's it. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, have a fantastic day and please stay safe. Cheers.